start, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh talk about the chapter 10 about the data aggregation and globalization, which is quite difficult to understand compared to R. Like I said, the Python actually provides more complicated functions so that it, uh, we can manipulate or aggregate or summarize our database depending on the complexity of the data structure. So Python actually has a lot of function to help us to do that in uh, easily. So in here, actually so far, we actually try to do the how to loading and merging and preparing for the data set, right, basically. So the how we can merging the table or loading the, uh, the data set, also creating the some of the pandas data frame or or some series and numpy arrays, how we can manipulate those data sets. And then now what we have to do is just kind of computing the group statistics and peopling the table. So that means the group statistics and how we can peopling or some of the rotating our uh, data set to get some more, to produce the more interesting representative values to to that help us to understand the more about the data uh, data values or data characteristics so this is our goal of the chapter 10 so so what is we have to do in this chapter is we have to try to learn the split the pandas object like a data frame and series into the pieces with the one or more keys. So we can learn how we can split them. And then when they split uh, the pieces, how we can calculate the group summary statistics, like uh, compare, like uh, calculating the average by the group or calculating the sum of the value, sum, summing up the value by group, etc. And also apply to the within group transformation and then other manipulation things like a linear regression and normalizations and length and subsets. And then also computing the pivot table and cross tabulation, which is also very important concepts. And also quantile and then uh, some statistical group analysis. So actually today we're gonna cover the first two bullet points. And then uh, next week, we're gonna try to list of the three, okay? That's the, our goal of the, this chapter 10. So to do that, we have to import the NumPy and Pandas, as always we did, like uh, do some uh, uh, abbreviation, like uh, MP and PD. And then, and then now we have to talking about the, how we can try to do the some of what is called the group operations. So in to do the group operations, we actually there is a, some of the three some of the process for the group operation, like a three steps. So first thing, we have to split it. Like a, like a, there is a one big data set like this. We have to split into the pieces, like a, some elements from the that table. And then what apply means is uh, when we split, uh, split the, these elements, we actually apply to the, some of the functions right for each group elements and then what combine means is when we split the elements and then apply to the functions and then combine these things as a one single value to as a representative value so these kind of things is a big basic process and then as you can see here in the at the top like a figure 10.1 there is a, like, for example, we have a key and then a data value like this. And then when we say about the split means split by group, right? Like a, a and B and C. And then we can actually assign the, get the those values by the group. And then when we, when we say about the apply means we actually apply the what is called the sum function set of the function like these things, 
like the sum or a mean or a size or a count, et cetera. There is a lot of uh, uh, potential functions. Or maybe we can also customizing, customizing our own function, right? And then combine means whenever we get the result by the sum function, we can combine those results all together as a another another pandas take pandas data frame. That's the how that's the how group aggregate group aggregation has been processed. So split first one and apply second one like apply to the function and then a combine is the third one to get the get the result. Okay. So in here, like like we like we did in here. So let's say about the, we can create the, this kind of a uh, uh, data frame. We can create it. So in here, we have a uh, two key value as an index, as a separate column actually, and then a data set value in here. And then when we try to do the group by for the for example like a key one, what we have to do is uh, we can call the group by method in here to the each data. So like a DF and then what does that mean for the data one is we only try to try to extract the data one. We actually have a data one and data two, right? But the thing is we only using the data one as a as a, our group operation. And then group by the key one, which is the this one, right? And then we have a key, have a key key, and under the key one, we have a, a and b in a bell in a in a bell uh, key index, right? And then when we try to do this one, and then when it, whenever we try to see the result, it seems like a, there is a some kind of very complicated kind of languages in here. This one is actually kind of a, what is called the memory memory uh, index number, which means this kind of a data operation result actually assigned to the some specific memory boxes, like uh, these kind of a result actually actually stored into the memory boxes number O X one seven B seven nine one three F zero. Okay. In that memory boxes there is actually this kind of a group group kind of a mem uh, data data operation result gonna be saved. And then to get the value we can get another method for the like a, for example mean if we wanted to get the mean value for that we just try to do the mean method like this. And then it actually allows us to get the mean value by the, by the key one, which is the A, mean of the A is this, and then mean of the B gonna be this. So this is uh, how it works about the group operation. So this mean function is a kind of a, what we call the apply, okay? And then uh, this group the value is actually we actually slice it, and then apply, and then uh, this result is actually combined, right? So there is a uh, three steps, right, for the group operation. That's the how it works. Any questions so far? Anything? Oh no, it's it's well uh, well clear. Well explained. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And then we can also uh pass thing to pass to the multiple array key as a list. So in here, we can have a uh, data one for the DF, and then a group by means we can actually try to do the two keys as a grouping criteria, right? And then apply function gonna be mean. So that means we have to one average value for the a uh a1 and then a2 and b1 and b2 
and then on each average value gonna be filled out for the as a as a, another data frame. That's the how it thinks. So in here, the group by in here means split, right? And then in here, this is the apply. And then uh, whenever it apply to the based on the these split elements, we can get the this combined result, right? All the three process, easy. And then now we actually have a, as a low index, actually we have a, this is what is called the hierarchical index. So we can actually try to do the unstack functions. We can move to the lower level of the key index, lower index key into the into the column, right? Like this. And then uh, there is only single column left. And then a uh, key two gonna be the the bell uh, the value for the key two index gonna be index name of the key two gonna be used as the column name in this case by using the unstack method and unstack method. We already covered this one in the previous chapters. And also what is the interesting about the, this one is whenever we have the same length of the arrays to, to the key as a, in terms of the key, we can actually replace them, these things, like a changing the name using the this same length kind of a index name as a key. Right? And then we can calculating it. Like a like a more like a updating or maybe I would say replacing the index index names. Because in, in the previously we actually using the A, B and one and two, right? But instead of the using the A and B, we can actually using Ohio. Uh, California as an A, and then uh, Ohio as a B, and then uh, 2005 gonna be one, 2006 gonna be two, as an order, okay? We can use like this, and then uh, whenever we calculate the, these means, we can get the, this kind of a table. As long as we have the right rank, the same rank, any arrays of the same length, we can actually updating and then changing the, the column index name, which is the interesting, okay? And then also we can keep doing that for this one, like a key. So what this one does is that we can group by the key one and then directly to the mean in this case, key two actually have a separate column not the index name. So it also calculating the this average too, which is not we wanted to see in this case. So what we have to do is that so we only try to do the option for the numeric only, but true. Because in this case, key actually key two is the we have to think about the key two as a string. But in this case, we can compare or we can calculate the mean method. This one actually looking at as a kind of a number, right? So which is a pitch we don't want to do that. So in that case, we can, what we can do is the group by as a key two, as a string. And then we actually try to do the mean for, and then we only try to calculate the numeric value is the true which is the data one and data two gonna be the calculate. Okay. So that's the how it works. And then the other thing we can also do the, do that for the uh, group by operation means the size. Size is a kind of a, kind of a calculating about the what kind, how many data set we have for the each group. So A, uh, key one is A and key two is one is that we only have a uh, one data set valid and then uh, also one data set valid, one data set valid, one data set valid as a size. 
this one does not count any any NAN or any NA value. Okay, these are the does not count. Okay, only bell only counting the valid value data. Okay. And then also drop NA force kind of options. That means we can actually calculating allows allow that actually allows us to counting the counting the number of cells that has the NAM value. Okay. It is also very useful when we try to checking the missing value, right? If we have a very big table in Python, we have to manipulate, but we have to make sure there is any missing value under the each column. We can try to using this kind of a method to calculating the is there any kind of a NAM value gonna be counted or not. Okay. It is also the same thing in here. Like a drop NA force means it actually calculating about the NA count and then the NAN as a low index title in the here, right? So which is the very convenient to see that there is any missing index name or missing index keys or index value in that table. If we wanted to check the these kind of missing values or missing index index names we can we can check the these things by using the these simple functions okay uh and also another thing actually has the count method count means is actually we just simply counting the number of keys and then number of data assigned to the each one so it simply computes about the Number of non no values so for the each group. Okay. It's, is it is it and, very similar to the sum, the count? Uh not the sum. It's a count means it's just only counting the number of data. Sum oh. is the value, sum of the value, right? Yeah, so I'm just saying well, maybe count it's, it's, count means just counting the cells. Yeah, just like okay. in a sense counting how many times A of course is just like the sum of A, you know. No, no, not the sum. Sum means sum means if you have a for example, for example, in here, right? If you have a these these values and then a this value gonna be sum, right? When okay. we say about the count to means we have to count to this one is the one, two, three. That is the count. Okay, okay. Do you understand what it means? Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Sum means actual value gonna be computed as a sum. Count means is a just a simply count of the this cell. Yeah, count the data, the data point. With yeah. the value. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then iteration over the group means this this one is actually very complicated concept, but uh when we return have the group by actually support to the iterations, like uh, generating the sequence of the tuples containing to the group main along to the chunk of data, what it means is if we have a name and group and then uh, each one has actually group by as a key one in this case what does that do is the print name means we can printing a in here and b right and then the print group means we actually try to listing listing the listing the set of the law that actually has the has the A as a key, and then a B as a key as a low. These are the actual low index number, and then we can just kind of a printing out the these kind of things separately 
depending on A and B, like a key one. Actually, key one has the A and B, A has A and B, right? Has the value values of A and B, right? And then the print name means we actually have a printing A and B first. And then the print group means after the after the printing the name, we actually printing the group means we actually try to printing out the group which has the whose value whose key value has an A like this. And then a has key value has the B here. We can also have the same thing for the this one, like as a set of the tuple as a name in here, and then a group and then a group by for the this key one and key two together. That means we have a A and one and A and two, B and one, B and two, because key one actually has an A and B, and then a key two actually has a one and two. We actually try to try to listing the whole possible group a comma one a comma two a comma three a comma four and group by this and then a listing the listing the row belonging to the each each two pool pair index pairs right that's the how it look like this this one is a kind of a kind of a iteration about the two to finding the some of the specific operations or there might be the some of the specific operations should be done depending on the each group pairs of the group we can actually come extract the each group elements separately and then apply to the sum of the functions as an iteration process if we want to do that but this one is a quite complicated and then uh, I personally think that it's a little bit hard to understand or takes time to get to know, get used to this kind of a process. Okay. I'm not sure if this can be useful or where when we can try to use this kind of thing, but maybe in the later, if we have chance, maybe there might be the time, but this one also can be done as a kind of iteration like a for loop by using the for loop, okay? And then this one is also can be done like a, as a kind of a dictionary kind of process. So whenever we have a dictionary like a name and group, and then in this case for the group, name and group for the group by the key one. So that means, like I said, in the table that I draw in here, there is a K1 and K key one and key two. And then a A, one and two, and data one and data two is in here, and B, one and two, like this, right? And then a key one actually means this one, right? So group by the this key. And then when we try to do the pieces into the B, which means we only try to look at the this one only. That's the reason why. We have the column index value three for the B2, and then a four as a B1, and then we actually showing the each data in here to check. Actually, this kind of whole iteration just kind of uh, tell us about the, some of the automating pro automated process of uh, of uh, uh, extracting some specific data set. Okay. So, so it is kind of a data extraction. How automated data ext uh, extraction algorithm by using the this kind of for loop, and then uh, using the this group and name value, and then uh, combine with the, this group by method. Okay. So that's the how it works. Any question? No, it's, 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 it's fine. Okay. So let's move to the next one, like uh, selecting the column and subset of the column. 
which is also a little bit complicated and you know, hard to understand. <laughs> so usually it says about the DF group by the T1 and data are the convenience for the this one. Like uh, actually these two are the same, but the thing is this one is the more straightforward kind of a process. That means we actually try to split by the B1 and then uh, extract the data, some specific data, right? This one is a kind of a, okay, we extract the first and then split it. Actually, either way will be okay because these two are actually has the same function and then uh, produce the same result. But the thing is, the first one is, is actually more like a more like a convenient things because uh, it actually split the first based on the grouping the first by the key and then extract some specific data which is the more more uh sequential kind of a process you know what i'm saying not the extract the first and then the splitting okay this one is the more i personally think that this is a more like a forward forward the process. This one is a more like a backward process. Okay. And then so so whatever we said in here, so we can group by the key one and key two like a split. And then we can extract some specific data to manipulate and then a calculate apply to the some function. Right? So split extract the data and then apply and then these result gonna be combined okay but you can have to check the this kind of a double bracket and single bracket like a difference between the two if you do the double bracket for the data column you actually maintain the index name also passed. But if you have a single bracket, you have you don't have a no index name has been passed in here. There is empty, right? Compared I mean, to the that's, that's yeah. important to take note of. <laughs> yeah, because we already covered this in the previous chapter, like a chapter eight or something. So mm -hmm. these kind of a, you have to notice that the, these kind of a double difference between the double bracket and then a single bracket. Double bracket actually give a uh, passing pass to the this index name too, but only single bracket does not pass the in uh, no index name has been passed as a result. Okay. Yeah. And then also grouping the dictionary and series is a kind of also uh important concept. So you can say about the we actually have a uh, this kind of a table, right? This function actually made in the this kind of table. And then we can also do the two, two colon three means only do the second second row, which means the zero, one, two, which is the wanda, right? And then one and two means zero, one, two. So B and C, column B and C has the has the none, not a number value, which is this, right? And then we can also try to do the mapping, the this kind of a column name assigned to the A as a key for the, the A has the, A is the key, and then the A actually has the value. So key and value pair, which is the, another dictionary. And then we can actually group by the this mapping structure axis to the column. And then that means if we can try to sum function, we actually get the value based on the this value function in a in a mapping dictionary, which is a very convenient and then an interesting manipulating technique. So we just try not do not have to the each designating the each column as a factor, 
we actually try to making the this kind of a key and value pair value pair on in another on creating the another dictionary key and value pair of the another dictionary and then using that one as a kind of a mapping structure to summarizing the our data statistics okay and also we can also try to do the map series like this using the this dictionary and then we can actually have uh, this row index name and then each row index name has the this kind of a value as a string and then we using the this map as a series and then a x combined group by as a column and then a counting means how many columns we have for the blue and red right that's the how we can do the grouping grouping functions by using the dictionary and also grouping with the function can be done which means instead of the, using the sum of the dictionaries or series or other key or value pair, we can also apply to the sum of the function as a criteria to the grouping, like counting the index name rank, right? Because in the previously, we actually have a Joe, Steve, Wanda, Zil, Trey, right? Joe actually has the rank of the three, Steve has a five, Wanda has five, Jill has four, Trey has four, like a length function, right? This length function actually counting the characters of the names, right? So by doing that, we can actually calculate, summarize the, our column, column values based on the number of characters for the row index name. Okay. And then also we can try to do the grouping by the index label, label, which means we actually have a hierarchical indexes data set like this. We can also aggregate the, this kind of a number of index axis index. So like here we have a multiple index, defined multiple index from the arrays, which means this one has the key one. No, no, this one is actually the key. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, key one. And then uh, this one is actually key two. And then a uh, key one actually has the name for the city. Key two has a na name for the tenor. Which one is like this? And then. We can actually try to do the group by for the level of the city and then access to the column to the count, right? Like here, city, like a column. And then tenor is also under the column, right? So columns is the columns, right? This one is a key one, this one is a key two. So we can label an axis and then a count, a count like this by the city and then access to the column and then we can counting it, right? So this one is just kind of explain about the group operation of the table, very basic function of the group operation of the table. Now let's talk about the, okay, how we can get the sum of the aggregation, like a value, summing up, summarizing the value by the group to get the some, some aggregated value result. So there is a lot of a group by method in here. You can actually check on that as a table. Like a, we actually practice about the count, mean, and sum. But the thing is we also calculating the standard deviation and variance and quantile, minimum, maximum, medians, and any and all, like uh, this one is actually true or false kind of a logic, logical result. So let's talk about the, this DF column, right? So what does that mean about the n small list means? 
two means we actually get want to know about the bottom two minimum smallest value among the data set. So when we say of the of the uh, A, right? And then we actually group by the key one like this. So key one actually has a, a and B. So among the A here, we have the nth smallest value is the smallest one is the this one. And then the next one is this, yeah, this. And then we also have a B has the smallest value is this, the uh, row three. And then a sm next smallest, second smallest value is the row four, which is the this and this, right? And also what we can do is we can actually try to creating the some of the specific our own function here, because in here we can actually turn the maximum difference between the maximum and minimum value, right? And then we can try to aggregate based on the this function. And then we can get the this data as follows. So the data sorry, one and two. Sorry, the, the argument that the, the function take in the, in this case, which is uh, uh, ARR could be could be anything, right? We could decide to put AX, uh, anything in it. Yeah, anything you can create, you can create, when you're creating the some specific function, you mm -hmm. can add, you can apply this one like this, or you can also like a group and agree and just kind of a blank. That means it's just to simply aggregate the values. So you could just uh, the uh, like the argument here, the 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 pick to pick. You could just uh, make it a the the bracket inside the bracket. You could just leave it empty, or you have to put a something there. You can leave it empty, or if you have any function to calculate, you can put that to put that function inside the oh, inside so the parentheses. You can yeah. call that function inside a parenthesis. Yeah, call the function. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So now we can also have a describe function, which is very useful to apply. This one is not actually aggregation, but describe function actually calculating about the count mean, standard deviation mean, and quantile and max. So that means describe function actually calculating the all possible exploratory statistic result, okay? I think it's just like the summarize in, in R, something like this. Yeah, just kind of a summarize. Actually mm. in R, mm. there is also same function. In R, there is also function called describe. And, mm. and in here, you can actually has the data frame name the data in there. Frame. Okay. Yeah, describe actually, Function is in psyche package. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I usually use the summarize. Okay. Yes, but describe function actually in the psyche, psyche package, you mm -hmm. can also see that there is the function called describe. It's the same function in Python. In R, describe function mm. in R also give you the same result mm. okay. as you can see in this one. That's good to know. There is a, yeah, this describe function is actually in the psych, psych, pack, psych, psych package, okay? Oh, the psych, oh, is it the psychology? <laughs> psych? Yeah, it's a psychology, psychology computation package. Oh, okay. So it's okay. a P P S Y C H. Mm. So when you, when you go to the this package and then uh, you can see the what yeah, is called the describe, describe function, function. Oh, okay. uh, describe functions mm -hmm. in the in the site package. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And then also next one is the column wise and multiple function application. So this one is actually we use the some of the actual CSV data set. Okay. Actually, for 
uh, your uh, your reference, as you can see here, uh, when you looking at the this uh, this link. Hold on. In the chat, I will copy and paste. When you click the that link, you can actually downloading the example used in the book. So you can actually also see the tips data set. And then you can down when you try to reading the these tips, you can see the these tips data, like the 244 rows and six columns. And then what we what we have to do in here is uh, we actually first uh calculating the tip percentage. So that means how many what percentage of the tips they give for the, each person. And then we can group by the day and smoker. And then we can also uh, extract the data set from the that group. And then we can aggregate the mean. So that means what is the percentage? What is the average percentage of the tip we get by the day and the uh smoking uh whether whether a, a customer smoke uh, smoke or not okay so in here on as you can see he in here when you say is the Friday uh those who smoke in at the restaurant tends to be pay more tips compared to the those who do not smoke, right? 17% and 15%, right? And Saturday is a slightly different. And Sunday and Thursday is the same, right? Pretty uh smoking, smoking person tends to be had tends to be give the more tips compared to the those who do not smoke, except for the Saturday, right? That's how you can group by and then summarize the data set and then based on the summary summary result, you can see the there is a, some trend about the about the percentage percentage of the tips uh depending on the customer's characteristic and then uh, the day customer came to the restaurant, right? And then as you can see here, when we try to do the describe function like this, you can actually see the whole different kind of a, a, a descriptive statistic result like this. Like uh, counting means how many data count we can get. And then uh, what's the mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum and quantile. That's the how we can do with the, all of the this, uh, all of the kind of a uh, calculation, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite yeah, clear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because in the in the previous yeah. chapter also he uses this, uh, this this the this tip data, yeah. So I'm a bit familiar yeah, with it. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So. All of the these things is the rest of the chapter for the for the this using the this data set actually shows you about the, how you can try to apply to the average and then the mean and variance and then uh, uh calculate the variance. Actually, in here you can say about the aggregation and then the uh, first one is the kind of a column name, and then the second one is the actually function. And then based on that, you can get the this average name and then uh, this one gonna be applied as a function. Same thing, this is the name, this is the function, calculating, right? Huh. And then also same thing, you can also do the result for the this total bill or percentage and then the aggregate function for the this, all of the this function gonna be applied based on the these two columns, right? This is how you can keep manipulating or calculating the group on calculating the sum of the summary statistics based on the some specific columns 
and then uh, extract uh, some specific uh, summary descriptive statistic re result by using the Python group operation languages. Okay. You can also setting define the set of the tuples, like a pair of the name and function. And then you can actually apply to the this tuple and then group by the these two columns. Also using the dictionary is the same. Okay. That's the how it works. But but all of the this function can be done by the if you can using the this describe function. You can get the, all of the, this kind of a uh, summary statistic by the column. Okay. Yeah. That's the, how you can do that. Or maybe you can do what we what you can do here is maybe I can do group, right? Uh, double bracket, eight percent, comma, total. Build. And then, if you can do this, you can get the total, uh, all of the these summary statistic for the this total percentage and total bill, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is the how you can keep manipulating and then uh, keep processing your what is called the summary statistic to understand your data set better. Okay, let's type 